This video was created to explain the story of the Warcraft series leading up to Warcraft 3. None of it is required to understand the plot of Warcraft 3, but it does explain all of the background for the main characters of the Third War, as well as the setup for the war itself. I'm going to be covering Warcraft 1, Warcraft 2, Warcraft 3 Beyond the Dark Portal, along with the novels Rise of the Horde, The Last Guardian, Lord of the Clans, Arthas, and the War of the Ancients trilogy. This is an abbreviated history, and because of that I will be skimming over certain details and characters that are irrelevant to the plot of Warcraft 3 and its expansion, The Frozen Throne. Okay, so with all of that, here we go. Alrighty, if you want to know the lore of the Warcraft games leading up to Warcraft 3 Reign of Chaos, you gotta go back a few years. So there's this planet called Draenor, it's inhabited by orcs and also Draenei. The two people are just hanging out when one day an orc chieftain named Nerzul is visited by the ghost of his dead wife. She tells him he has to unite the orc clans and everything will be great, so Nerzul goes off and gets all the orcs together. Now the orcs are shamanistic, they believe in nature and elemental forces. These elements visit Nerzul and go, dude, you're being tricked by a demon, you shouldn't have united all of the orcs. So Nerzul resigns from being a part of the new orc horde, and runner-up to Nerzul is a frail orc spellcaster called Gul'dan, but Gul'dan is noticeably evil so none of the orcs want him to be leader of the orc horde. So instead, Gul'dan gets the biggest, dumbest orc warchief called Blackhand to be his puppet leader, while Gul'dan works backstage. See, Gul'dan is all about gaining more magical power, and the demons who trick Nerzul don't even have to bother tricking Gul'dan. Gul'dan is all about trading the orcs' free will to the demons in exchange for dark magic. Gul'dan is given a bunch of demon blood and he offers it to the horde, telling them it would make them the strongest, most badass guys around. The orcs drink the blood and start going crazy with bloodlust. They all but massacre the Draenei and afterwards are still so itching to fight that they just start fighting themselves. Gul'dan realizes that this is a problem, so he gets in contact with his demon masters and they instruct him to create a giant magic portal which will take the orcs to a new world where they can fight and conquer a whole other species. With that, they make a giant magical gate, it's called the Dark Portal, and Gul'dan leads the horde through it to a new planet called Azeroth. Okay, so Azeroth is the name of the planet and also the name of the continent, kinda like if Earth was called Australia. So for the sake of everyone involved, I'm just going to call the planet Azeroth and the continent the Stormwind Kingdom. Cool, cool. Alrighty, so on this new planet Azeroth, located on the southern continent, is where the human kingdom of Stormwind is. These guys are ruled by King Lane, and he's pretty chill. King Lane has two best friends, the greatest knight who ever lived, Anduin Lothar, and the greatest wizard who ever lived, Medivh. Reports come in from the locals that green monsters have been terrorizing the southern lands of Stormwind. Anduin takes an army to investigate, he meets the orcs, and they fight. This is basically the first war. It's a whole bunch of nothing fights between Anduin Lothar and Warchief Blackhand. Meanwhile, Medivh and his young apprentice Khadgar are trying to figure out who the orcs are, what they want, and how they got to Azeroth to begin with. While trying to figure it out, Khadgar discovers that Medivh actually helped make the dark portal the orcs used. It turns out that Medivh has been possessed by one of the demon lords helping Gul'dan this whole time. Khadgar runs to tell King Lane and Anduin Lothar. King Lane tells the other two to go stop Medivh and that he'll be in charge of the defense of Stormwind while they're gone. Anduin and Khadgar rush over to Medivh's tower, and before they kill Medivh, Khadgar gets cursed by his master, turning him from a teenager into an old man. So they kill Medivh, then Anduin, Lothar, and old man Khadgar rush back to Stormwind just in time to see that it's under siege by the Horde. King Lane gets assassinated, and the defense of the kingdom falls. Anduin and Khadgar gather as many people as they can, hop into a bunch of boats, and flee their kingdom. And with Stormwind in ruins, the Horde takes over, getting ready to pursue the human refugees. Okay, so that's the plot of Warcraft 1, Rise of the Horde, and The Last Guardian. Now we gotta do Warcraft 2. So it turns out that Gul'dan was telepathically connected to Medivh, and when the wizard died, the orc was put into a coma. Gul'dan wakes up a few days or whatever later to find out that the horde has destroyed Stormwind. Nice. However, his puppet Blackhand was killed by an orc named Orgrim Doomhammer. Not nice. Gul'dan tries to be all like, Hey Doomhammer, cool name, I'm kinda like the brains of the horde, so if you want, I can take control again, and it will be great. Except, Doomhammer actually hates Gul'dan and all demon magic. Doomhammer in fact killed all of Gul'dan's warlocks, and is like, The Horde used to have honor, and you ruined it for everybody. Either make yourself useful or I'm going to kill you. Gul'dan brings up the point that the humans have wizards, and since Doomhammer killed all of the orc warlocks, the Horde don't have anyone to fight magic users. So then Gul'dan goes over and resurrects the corpses of human knights, but he puts the souls of orc warlocks inside of them. These guys are called Death Knights, and they have the physical skills of a warrior and all the magical skills of a warlock. Doomhammer is like, fine, you can stay alive, but I'm still in charge of the Horde. 
Gul'dan isn't happy that he isn't in charge anymore, and Doomhammer is still debating about killing Gul'dan, but they, along with the rest of the Horde, hop inside some boats and go chasing after the humans. Speaking of humans, the northern continent of Azeroth is called the Eastern Kingdoms, with the biggest kingdom being Lordaeron. The refugees show up in the kingdom of Lordaeron, and Anduin, Lothar, and Khadgar run into the cleverly named Capital City, shouting about how the orcs are coming. So King Terranus II is the ruler of Lordaeron, and he's all about getting all the kingdoms together to fight the orcs. So all these kingdoms unite, and they make Anduin Lothar leader of the Human Alliance army. The elves of Quel'Thalas the Lost don't take the orc threat seriously enough though, and they only leave one group of archers behind to be a part of the human army. And the holy priests, after hearing about the orc warlocks and death knights, decide to offer up a counter. They're going to fight demon magic with holy magic, so they send in the Knights of the Silver Hand to join the Alliance army. These guys are paladins, and the notable ones are Tyrion Forgering, Uther the Lightbringer, and Turalyon. Turalyon fits right in with the boys from Stormwind, Anduin becomes a mentor to him, and he and Khadgar become fast friends. Turalyon also sparks a friendship with the leader of the Elven Archers, Illyria Windrunner. So these four are the big heroes of the Alliance, and before you know it, they'll have to face off against the Orcish Horde. The Orcs have finally caught up to the humans in Lordaeron, and Anduin Lothar takes the Alliance army out to fight against them. Even with Death Knights, the Orcs aren't doing great against the Alliance forces, so Doomhammer just starts retreating to try and find a way to get around the Alliance army. Lothar and Turalyon each split the army up and each take half. Lothar to protect Capital City and Turalyon to chase after Doomhammer. The Horde decides to go around through the Hinterlands and Airy Peak. There, they bring out their new weapons, Red Dragons. Turalyon is not prepared, but his army is saved by the arrival of Dwarven Griffin Riders. These dwarves are led by Kurger and Wildhammer. Kurgerin teams up with Turalyon to fight the orcs, but the Horde keeps running away from combat. Doomhammer comes across some useful allies of his own, the Imani Trolls, led by Zul Jin. The two forces team up, but Zul Jin will only help Doomhammer take Capital City if the Horde takes the Elfish Kingdom of Quel'Thalas the Lost first. They start making their way up through the mountains and begin a siege against the Elf Kingdom. Turalyon and his army show up to Quel'Thalas, the Lost, but the kingdom is already on fire. While the elves are still standing and fighting, they're not winning against the Orcish Horde, not until Turalyon joins the fray anyway. With two armies pincering him, Doomhammer withdraws from the battle, taking the Horde back to regroup. He tells Zul'jin that strategically it would be better to take out the humans first, then come back and finish off the elves. Zul'jin disagrees and the two split apart. Orgrim gets the Horde back together and plans an assault on Capital City. He made a deal with a jealous human lord to allow him through a neighboring kingdom and surprise Anduin Lothar's defense force. Turalyon is still miles behind in Quel'Thalas. the Lost. It's a perfect opening for the Horde to burn down another human kingdom. The two armies meet, the full might of the Horde versus Anduin's half of the human army, but Anduin Lothar is a tough guy to beat. The Alliance holds the Horde at bay, but they're slowly breaking. Unfortunately for the Horde though, Gul'dan takes this opportunity to take some of the Orc army in Flea. He was shown visions of a powerful demon artifact, one that would make him a god, so he convinces an Orc clan or two to leave with him. They set sail to an island, open up a demon tomb, and Gul'dan and his minions are devoured by what lays inside. Back in Lordaeron, Orgrim is down some troops, but he's not out. Yet. When Turalyon shows up with his army of humans and dwarven griffin riders and reinforcements from Quel'Thalas, that's when Orgrim Doomhammer is out. The orc starts retreating all the way out of Lordaeron to reach their new orcish stronghold, Blackrock Mountain. Now with a fully united human army and the armies of the other races, and when Lothar chases after the Horde. The two armies meet at Blackrock Mountain and Orgrim Doomhammer kills Anduin Lothar in battle. Enraged by the death of his mentor, Turalyon defeats Doomhammer and imprisons him. The orcs slowly get rallied up and are imprisoned, and the second war ends. Almost. So this part isn't particularly important to Warcraft 3 and I'll just skim over the finer points. The red dragons that were captured by the orcs were freed by three heroes, the alliance starts rebuilding Stormwind, the humans make a giant fortress outside of the Dark Portal, where Turalyon, Khadgar, Illyria, and Kurdran are all holed up in case the orcs come back. Meanwhile, on Draenor, Ner'zhul gets roused to save the orcs. One of the Death Knights, Terran Gorfin, is sent back to Azeroth to collect a few specific items. A small orc force heads into Azeroth, dodges Turalyon's defenses, and heads out to find these mystical items. Terran Gorfin teams up with the Black Dragon Aspect Deathwing to get everything they need. Once all the items are gathered, Gorfin and Deathwing head back through the Dark Portal. Turalyon and his friends lead a force called the Sons of Lothar to go after the orcs into their home world. 
The orcs being led by Ner'zhul head to the Black Temple, all while the Sons of Lothar are hot on their heels. Ner'zhul gets to the Black Temple and starts a ritual to open a new dark portal for his people to flee through. Unfortunately for everyone involved, Ner'zhul summons too many dark portals and rips his world apart. Literally. Everyone on Draenor, Tyrallian, Illyria, Kurdran, Gorfin, Ner'zhul, and every orc and human on the planet were lost forever as the planet was demolished. That is until later, but for all of Warcraft 3 related purposes, that's basically what happens. And that is a summary of Warcraft 2 and its expansion. Okay, now we're almost done, just a few more things to get through. So, Orgrim Doomhammer escapes the prisons of Lord Aran and disappears into the wilds. Meanwhile, all the orcs that were captured at Blackrock Mountain had been put into internment camps for the past decade or so. In one of the camps called Durnhold, the human warden Blackmore has found a baby orc and raised him. Blackmore wanted to have a personal gladiator, so he taught the baby to have all the strategy and intelligence of a human, but with all the strength and tenacity of an orc. He named his would-be gladiator Thrall. When Thrall grew up, he escaped Durnhold. In the wilds, he comes across Orgrim Doomhammer and Grom Hellscream. Orgrim was good friends with Thrall's father, and he tells Thrall everything about their homeworld, and of Thrall's parents. Doomhammer and Hellscream comment about the uses of demon magic and how the orcs were corrupted. They tell Thrall about the old ways of the orcs, about shamanism and embracing the elements. Thrall ventures out to find his father's old clan, the Frostwolves. They teach Thrall how to be a shaman, and then when Thrall returns, he and Doomhammer team up with Grom Hellscream to liberate as many internment camps as possible. When they eventually get to the internment camp Durnhold, Doomhammer is killed during the liberation raid. In his last breaths, Doomhammer gives Thrall his weapon and his armor and claims that Thrall should be the war chief of the new horde. Thrall and Hellscream are currently liberating orcs and dodging Alliance forces in the Arathi Highlands by the start of Warcraft 3. So for this backstory, we'll have to travel back in time 10,000 years. Forever ago, the continents of Azeroth were all connected, kinda like Pangaea. The race that dominated the world at the time were beings called the Night Elves. The Night Elves were heavy magic users, and they gained their magical powers from this thing called the Well of Eternity. However, Demon Lords, the same evil Demon Lords from Warcraft 1, go into contact with the Night Elf Queen, Queen Azara. Queen Azara decides to work with the demons and summon them into her world. Meanwhile, a small band of heroes disagree with that idea. They are the brothers, Malfurion and Illidan Stormrage, Priestess Tyrande Whisperwind, and the demigod of the forest, Cenarius. Together, using holy magic from the moon and druidic magic from nature, they start to fight against the Night Elves, trying to bring the demons over. More and more of the Night Elf population begins to side with Malfurion and his friends, but by then it's too late. The demons have been summoned into Azeroth. Queen Ajar and her highborn followers set up to summon the Lord of the Demons while the Lesser Demon army goes and defeats the Uprising. Malfurion, his friends, the Night Elf army, all of the demigods, most of the dragons, and some other guys all team up at Mount Hyjal and push back against the demon forces. With enough room to break through, Malfurion, Illidan, and Tyrande get to the Well of Eternity and destroy it, separating the world into massive continents, stopping the demon ritual and defeating Queen Ajara. No longer able to use the magic from the Well of Eternity, the dragons provide a giant magical tree for the Night Elves along with teaching them druidic magic. The big tree grants the Night Elves immortality, but before everyone can go home and say job well done, Illidan does something stupid. Illidan isn't big on druid magic, and his lust for the Well of Eternity's power had him sneak away with a few vials of the well. When Illidan tries to recreate the Well of Eternity, Malfurion and the Night Elf leaders catch him and imprison him. The Night Elves now stay on their western continent at Kalimdor, far away from any of the wars between orcs and humans. Until Warcraft 3. Okay, almost done, bear with me. King Terranus II is still ruler of Lordaeron, and his young son Arthas has recently become a paladin. Under the tutelage of Uther the Lightbringer, Arthas has defeated trolls, bandits, and orcs. Arthas had a girlfriend once upon a time, the mage Jaina Proudmoore, but he was focused on helping the people and she was focused on becoming a great wizard. And by the start of Warcraft 3, Jaina is attending the Warcraft version of Hogwarts, and Arthas is spending his days helping folks in need alongside Uther. And finally, the last thing that happens before Warcraft 3 starts, the absolute last thing you need to know, is after the destruction of Draenor, Ner'zhul, it turns out, is still alive. He was sucked into the realm of the demon lords who tried to manipulate him at the start of the video. The demons torture Ner'zhul, rip his flesh from his body, then his spirit from his remains, and put him into a giant block of ice and dump him on Azeroth. Ner'zhul is now a tool for the demons, and his job as the Lich King of the Undead is to wipe out all living things that stand against the demons and their burning legion. 
And that about does it. I abbreviated some things here, skipped some things there, but all in all, this is the important stuff that happens leading up to Warcraft 3. I tackled the events from Warcraft 1, 2, Beyond the Dark Portal, the books, and I even talked about some stuff from the game manual that was released alongside the original Warcraft 3. Hopefully this was explained coherently and made some sort of sense and was somewhat entertaining. If you enjoyed the video, let me know. If you want to know more about the lore, I'll leave some links in the description. Thanks a lot for watching, take it easy, and I'll see you all in Reforged.